Good morning on this third Sunday after Easter, Sunday of Jubilate. I start off the watchword from 2 Corinthians 5. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has gone. Look, the new has come. We had our SGM last weekend and it went well. Our finances are tight, but the bank is happy. We are not running at a loss. The CCW, those are all the churches in the Western Cape area, had their AGM and it went very well. Coming weekend is the CCE, those are the churches in Eastern Cape plus Bloemfontein. They have their AGM coming weekend and I will be there giving report from the CCW side. There will be no YouTube service next weekend. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you that you are our Lord present in our lives, that the Holy Spirit warms our hearts to you, Lord, that we know you see us. Thank you, Lord, for how good and great you are, and thank you for the rain that you have sent. Let it fall where, it need, where it's still needed, Lord, and let those who are going through difficult times feel your presence, your love, your embrace. Let our joy be everlasting, Lord, in you. Amen. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from where he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrections of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon text today is John chapter 16 from verse 16 to 24. I read first from the ESV translation. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, A little while? and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. For joy that a human being has been born into this world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. A beautiful text speaking of joy and sorrow. A message we hold on to, a message that we as Christians hold on to as a promise from God, a Easter promise. Jesus speaks of a little while gone and a little while before he returned. When is this little while? When is this time? Was it already or is it something we are still waiting for? Is it the coming of the Holy Spirit which Jesus spoke of in the beginning of chapter 16? It's not much of a surprise that the disciples were confused of Jesus' words. A little while, they needed clarity. In John 7 and 13, Jesus has already hinted at a time apart. But here he adds that after this time apart, they will see him again. Jesus, hearing them talk about it, he addresses their uncertainty by using a well-known parable from the Old Testament, that of the woman giving birth. This parable was used in the time of exile to speak about how those tears in Babylon would one day be changed to tears of joy as they would return. They'd forget about the pain and sorrow they had, for great joy will be given to them. This parable was a promise from God 
in the Old Testament to comfort his people and to give them strength in difficult times. A promise that was fulfilled when they could return to Israel and Jerusalem. This is what the disciples needed. But first there will be sadness and weeping, as verse 20 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. The disciples will both weep and make lamentation for death. By contrast, the world will rejoice for, at the death of one whom they viewed as an enemy. But the situation of the disciples will speedily be transformed. Their anguish will return to joy after another little while. After Jesus died on the cross, those who wanted him God would have fought the day one. They would be happy, for this enemy of the Romans was now shown to be just another false messiah coming to save the Jews, but failing. On the one side, so much sadness, on the other, joy. But this does not last forever. There will be joy again in a little while. This brings us to the question of when this little while is, or is it maybe all of the possibilities? The shortest little while was that between Good Friday and Easter, as the woman in labor goes from pain to joy, so the disciples did as well. The Lord who has died will see them again. Look at the difference between verse 16 and 22. In verse 16 it says, you will see me. In verse 20 Jesus says, I will see you. And that seeing will make their joy unending. Jesus seeing them instead of them seeing Jesus shows that this is more, just, more than just some spiritual insight that they will have after Jesus' death. The disciples will know joy instead of sadness because Jesus having left them in dead, will meet them again in resurrected life. It is the Easter resurrection that is in view here. This means that no man will have power to rob the disciples of their joy, because Easter is not an isolated event, but the beginning of the new creation, wherein the disciples will know the presence of the Lord in a manner impossible in the days of his flesh. From that time on, therefore, life for them is existence in the shared fellowship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What does this little mean for us? Is our joy unending? We live in a time wherein we are in fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We live in this fellowship because the Holy Spirit has brought us to faith. Because of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and Him seeing us. And because of God's love for all the world He created and chose to be in relationship with. This means we can know and experience Jesus' presence in a way that was impossible in the time of his earthly ministry. We are living in a new time, a time of grace, a time of fellowship and a time of love. Not just for one people, not just for some who happen to live at the right time, at the right place, but for all, the whole world. The resurrection happened on one beautiful morning, but it was the start of a new creation. A new creation where no one could take away the joy of the disciples. It wasn't easy for them, yet they could have joy in knowing that they were saved by a power that overcame death and sin. Such a joyful message, such a wonderful thing to have after sorrow and pain. Life is not easy. We experience pain and feel sad. We can wonder why is this world so upside down? so messed up, so evil. All this we can, but we can also have joy. Joy in knowing that there is light in this world, a light that no one can dim. We can have joy in knowing that death and sin was overcome, and that no matter what, we will be with the Father in joy after a little while. When that little while is, I don't know. For me it doesn't matter. My joy is in the Lord and not in the world. Whether I'm here for another 10, 20, 50 or 100 years, we are living in a new day. Verse 23, in that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Prayer and the answering of prayer is always an interesting topic with some differences of opinion. I'm glad to say it's not dependent on me to answer prayers 
or to give or not. If we look at Jesus' words here, firstly we see after he is gone, the request of prayer for his disciples won't be directed at him as during his earthly ministry. During his earthly ministry, people would have asked him for guidance, insight, healing and other things when he was among them, as they knew him as a man of God and a miracle worker. After he is gone, their requests and prayers will have to go to the Father. Their prayers to the Father should also take a new form, to be in the name of Jesus. And this is where we have to be careful. In praying to God, we need to follow Jesus' example, as he prayed on the night when he was betrayed. Let not my will be done, Lord, but your will. To this, Jesus' name is then added. Does praying in Jesus' name then mean that we have a blank check? No. Does it mean that if someone's prayer is not answered in a way that they want, that they did not believe right or enough or use the right words or something like that? No. It is not for us to judge why some feel their prayers are answered and others not. We don't have the authority to judge. It's the Lord's business, not yours or mine. What we have is knowing that Jesus sees us. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray to God and God hears our prayers. God hears your prayers, whether you feel like they are answered or not. God is with you. Have joy in knowing that. In knowing that you can pray to one who sees you. You don't have to be physically with a person, but you are always with our Lord and Savior. In His name we pray, let your will be done, Father, not mine. This is a joyful message that was created in you at Easter and will be forevermore. This means that no one will have power to rob us of our joy, because Easter is not an isolated event, but the beginning of a new creation, where we will know the presence of the Lord in a manner impossible in the days of His flesh. For this time we are in is a time we live in the existence and shared fellowship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us share the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this new time, in this new creation we are living in, in fellowship with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, know that the Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord makes His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord sees you and has favor on you and gives you peace. Amen.